What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be making this tensile structure with grasshopper, rhino, and kangaroo too. Alright, so our first step today in creating this structure is we're going to do this in three parts. We have tensile parameters here, control point creation, and service creation. It's a good idea to label all this, so just type in the scribble command and you can write those in yourself. So we're gonna start out with the tensile parameters section of this. So I'm gonna plop all the modules in here that you need, so just pause the video in a second and do that as well. So here are all the modules that we need to create the parameters for the tensile structure. So you can use a regular point here, but um, just if you want to go off a different definition, a construct point is good because you can take multiple inputs from that. But we're going to connect our construct point first off into the uh, plane for the polygon and the center for our circle C and R. So this both gives these the uh, same starting spot. So next we're going to create a ratio between the size of our circle for the top and our polygon for the base. So we're going to take our bottom radius here and we're going to drag that into A and also we're gonna drag that into the radius of our polygon. So next we're gonna take our top radius factor and we're going to drag that into the bottom of our division module there and for the result we're gonna drag that into our radius. So next for our polygon we have the segments that we want for that polygon. Of course just drag that into the segments there. And then from our circle here let me make all this visible real quick. Not sure why it wasn't in the first place. But anyways, you can see what we have so far here. So from our circle, we're gonna drag this into the geometry of our move, and you can see that gets moved up to the top there. Because we don't have anything connected, it's just moving it uh, randomly. So we wanna control how far that moves. In my case, I want it to move down, so I have a height here of negative four, and we'll just move that unit Z into the motion there and you can see that it moved it down. So we don't want to get confused so we're just going to take the uh, circle C and R here and we're going to want to turn that off. So you can see now we have the uh, bottom of our structure here and the base for our structure. Moving on to our control point creation, I'm going to drop all the modules in here. You can pause it and drag all those into your workspace. Alright, so here's all the modules that we need for the next segment of our structure here. Now, uh, there's not many modules here, but just a fair warning, this has to be done in the exact order I'm going to do it, or else this will just fall apart and not work at all. So we need to link these two sections here together, so we'll start by doing that by connecting the brep to the polygon here. Next, we're going to need to connect our geometry to our curve of our divide curve. Let me turn all this on real quick. Now that all that's visible, you can see that we have control points at all of our vertices, and we also have control points on our circle here, but they are not corresponding to these vertices. So to get them to do that, we need to take our count here and drag it over to our segment number over here. So that way uh, we have six segments on our circle that line up with the vertices of our polygon. So the next part is kind of the confusing part here. So this is the part that really has to be done in order. So we're going to take from our eye here, we're going to drag that down to our geometry. Just a quick note here, um, you get these extra options by just zooming in, just pressing the plus button until we get five different outputs. So now that we got that in our geometry, we can take it from the geometry and add it to our point. And then we're gonna go down here and alternate how we do this here. So this will get added into the point. So we'll get into the geometry in and out to the point. It's just important you do this in order because basically what we're doing here is ordering the data that is coming into this point. So that way when we draw some lines here, they will actually match up. Now you can see uh, they're floating here a little bit. We don't want that. So we're going to uh, 
this is just a regular number slider at zero and our unit vector z is going to go into all of our motion tabs here. So now everything is nice and held in place on our base. And that's all we have for the control point creation. So next we're moving over to surface creation. So let me drag all the modules in here. All right, so here's all the modules that you need to do the surface creation portion of this. So first off, we need to connect the vertices of our polygon to our circle down below. So to do that from our line here, the start point is going to be the points of our circle and the end point is going to be the points from the base. So if you did all this here correctly, uh, it should all be in order, which means these lines should be straight and not messed up at all. So then um, going into the loft here, you need to go to the loft options and make sure this is selected as uh, close loft and commit changes. And then connect your lines to the curves there and that'll make a nice surface around those points. So from there, we're going to take the loft and move it into the surface of our mesh. And then we're going to take our result from our multiplication, take it into U count and then our uh, number slider here at the bottom, we're going to take that into B count. So we need to set up this multiplication right here. So our number slider is going to go into the B part and the A will go all the way back to our number of segments. So now we have all that. So everything should be hooked up to our mesh now. So from the mesh, we're going to connect that into our edge links and show commands. So we're setting this all up to get calculated in Kangaroo now. So from our edge links, we want to make sure all of our factors are zero. We don't want to change those. And as far as anchor points go, we want to make sure we go back and get those uh, original control points that we made earlier. So now that we have all our anchors, uh, when you first drag merge in there, I think you only have two. So just zoom in and press the plus and we only need three inputs here. So show will go into D1, edge links D2 and anchor into D3. So now we are set up to start kangaroo. This part is easy. So we're just going to grab a solver from kangaroo 2 and we're going to drag it into our goal objects. You can see now that it starts calculating the physics of what this actually does. And it's sort of like a cloth being pulled toward our control points. And you end up with this nice form here. So uh, important thing, if you want to go and mess with any of these number sliders and try to change the shape, a good thing to do is to grab a button. And then we can connect this button to the reset. So if we want to change anything, we can reset and it will recalculate everything. So let me just turn off everything we have here. And we're left with the structure here. So that's an easy way to make some tensile structures in Kangaroo. There's a bunch of cool things you can do with this. Uh, but that's all I have for today. So thank you guys for watching.